Good morning, Passion Church. Are we ready to worship the Lord this morning? Should we stand if we can? We're going to worship our Savior this morning. Oh, 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 it's coming on the clouds. It's coming on the clouds. Kings and kingdoms will bow down. And every chain will break as broken hearts declare his praise. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before Him. Open up the gates. So open up the gates. Make way before the King of Kings. And the God who comes to save is here to set the captives free. For who can stop the Lord? Come on, church. Our God. Our God is the Lion. The Lion of Judah is roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before Him. Every knee will bow before You, Lord. Every tongue confess that You are worthy, that You are holy. Come on, church. Let's just lift up our voices in worship. You are worthy of all praise. You are worthy of all honor. Jesus, you are holy. You are mighty. Jesus. Come on, with one voice we declare. Who can? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? Of the Lord Almighty, who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? Who can stop the Lord? Who can stop the Lord? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chain. Every knee will bow before the lion and the lion. Every knee 
every knee will bow before Him. Oh, 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 Every tongue confess that you are Lord, Jesus, you are Lord, you're Lord above it all, you are Lord, you are Lord above it all. Jesus, I'll raise a hallelujah. In the presence of my enemies. Come on, church, with one voice we declare. I'll raise a hallelujah. Come on, louder than the unbelief. Louder than the unbelief. Oh, we raise a hallelujah. I'll raise a hallelujah. My weapon. Come on, if you believe it this morning. Heaven comes to fight for me. I'm going to sing. I'm going to sing. In the middle of this Come on, church, let's be louder. Louder and louder. You're going to hear my praises roll. All from the ashes. Come on, death is defeated. Death is defeated. The King is alive. I raise the hallelujah. I raise the hallelujah. With everything inside of me. I raise the hallelujah. Watch the darkness flee. I'll raise a hallelujah in the middle, in the middle of the mystery. I raise a hallelujah. Fear you, Lord. Fear you, Lord, to hold on me. Come on, church. In 
the middle, middle of the storm. Come on, church. Louder and louder. We're going to hear our praise roar. Up from the ashes, our will arise. Death is defeated. I'm going to say Death is defeated. Death is Come on, just declare King's life. Our King is alive. King is alive. I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah. Let's make a shout of praise to the King of Kings, to the Lord of Lords. We raise a hallelujah. Come on, church, we can do better than that. Let's raise a hallelujah to King Jesus. Lord, we praise you. There's a shout in the house this morning. God is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. There is no one like you in heaven and earth. Hallelujah. Paul and Silas, when they... Uh, were in prison, they raised a hallelujah, and the walls came tumbling down. Lord, we wait on your presence. We thank you, Lord, that you're with us this morning. We thank you that there is no one greater than you in heaven and earth, has ever existed in heaven and earth. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You know, you may feel that you're surrounded this morning, problems surrounding you, that you're in a battle. But I want to tell you that the battle belongs to the Lord. It may look like you're surrounded. It may look like you're surrounded, but we're surround, surrounded by God this morning. Hallelujah. You know, I love in the word of God it says, Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be shaken, but endures forever. Are we in the Lord this morning? Yes, we're in the Lord this morning. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people both now and forevermore. We're surrounded by God this morning. Whatever we're going through, trials, whatever we've got to face this week, we're surrounded by the living God. I want to say to your church, it's a new day. It's a new week this, this week. I believe now is the time for God's favour. Now is the day of salvation. I speak it over the church. God is for me and not against me. Can you imagine this? King of kings, God who created heaven and earth is for me and not against me. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. You know, Jesus says to us this morning, come to him. His arms are open wide. If you're online and you're feeling pressed in, ask Jesus to come to you. You know, on the Emmaus Road, when they, when they went in, the guys, guy and gal, whoever they were, didn't recognize. And he invited them, in, they invited him into their house. Jesus couldn't do that as part of it would have been bad for him and, and tradition wise but they invited him and he went in so Lord we invite you we invite you this morning we invite you into our presence into here Isaiah says you whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and called from its farthest regions and said to you you are my servant I have chosen you and I will not cast you away it goes on to say, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, 
for I am your God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So, Lord, we pray for people needing strength this morning. We pray that they will receive your strength in the name of the Lord. The Bible says if we enter his gates with thanksgiving in our heart, he gives us a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. We can take off these clothes of heaviness and God clothes us in his robes and puts a ring on our finger. You know, I believe at the moment that the Lord is pouring out his spirit on the church and for those that are willing to receive. Jesus said, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scriptures have said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Living water, living water to, to bless. Living water to have grace. Living water to receive of every situation. We used to sing a song, let your living water flow over my soul. Let your Holy Spirit come and take control of every situation that has troubled my mind, all my cares and burden. To you I roll. Come now, Holy Spirit, hold me in your loving arms and make me whole. Wipe away all doubt and fear and take my pride. Draw me to your love and keep me by your side. You know, I believe we're in a time when we need to get ready for God. To, God is going to move. God is going to move whether we're ready or not, but we need to be ready. We need to be in that place. I believe that God is preparing our hearts to move forward. God is preparing our hearts to move forward for what he has planned for Passion Church Blidworth. Amen. Amen. Also, the word of, said, of God says, not that I have already obtained all this or have already arrived at my good, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to, ta to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, I forget what is behind, straining forward to what is ahead. I press on towards the goal to win the prize for what Christ has prepared for us. We need to be ready to move forward. For God to turn situations around. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we honour you. Come on, let's just speak words of our own, of thankfulness to Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We are ready, Lord. We can hear the sound of a moving in the trees. Lord, we can see your hand coming forward to bless. My God, my God. My God, my God. God will do more for us than we can abundantly ask or think. If you're in a place of sickness this morning, let's believe, shall we? We believe that God is our healer, our comforter. Lord, we receive your healing power now in the name of Jesus into this house. Amen. Mark, could you just rest your hand on the little child next to you? Lord, we pray for Naomi in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray through transference, Lord, of this. Lord, we pray that you will be with her, that you will strengthen her. And Lord, as she faces treatment, Lord, you will be in this. And Lord, we will see good coming out of this. We believe, Lord Jesus, in you. We thank you, Lord that you were wounded for our transgressions and by your stripes we are healed. So we pray for Naomi in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, we pray. We pray. Thank you. Somebody's got a shoulder problem here this morning. I don't know. Left shoulder, I think. No, right shoulder. It's right shoulder. 
I believe that the Lord is able to heal you. Lord, we, Jesus, we put our trust in you. 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 In the mighty name of Jesus. So, Lord, we receive all good things, what you would have for us. God said to me this morning that I belong to God's kingdom. We might live in the United Kingdom, but we belong in God's kingdom. We belong to God and he takes care of us. Pray for Glenn as he ministers the word this morning that your hand will be upon him. That the words he speaks will come from you and we will walk out different than we've walked in. Amen. Amen. We're going to take the offering up now. It's something we do to show how much we love God. If you've come not prepared, that's cool, that's fine. But you know, God says, trust me in this. Give and it will be given unto you. Pressed down, shaken. The barns will be full. Amen. We'll worship God while we take the offering. You were the offering You were worthy. You were the 
together for Jesus. Jesus, you are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Jesus. Amen. 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 Let's just continue to stay in this atmosphere of worship. You know, we're going to open up God's scriptures together this morning. And we want God to speak to us, don't we? So, Father God, we come before you, Lord God, and we just prepare our hearts right now. Lord, as we open up our hearts to you right now, Lord, will you speak to us? Lord, will you minister to our very being, Lord God? Will you just bring about a transformation in our lives, Lord God? Will you just bring about awakening in our hearts? Revive our spirits, Lord God, to pursue more of you and your kingdom. So, Father, I pray, Lord God, as we open up our hearts to you right now, Lord God. Lord, we welcome you. With praise, we welcome you with honor. We welcome you, Lord God, with everything in us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So come on, church. We've got Pastor Glenn Tice bringing the word of God to us this morning. Why don't we get our hands together and welcome Pastor Glenn Tice as he brings the word of God. Thank you, guys. I know I say it every week, but amazing time together. But we have a great worship team. But, you know, we contribute to the worship in this place. We're the ones that help. The worship team are just a motivation for us, and they do a great job. But, you know, praise is about what we do in response and how we respond to that. And I just think, guys, you are amazing, as always, this morning. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm becoming a creature of habit, but I don't quite start in the way that I anticipated. I, I do, I, no, I don't apologize for it. I do not apologize for it. But I got a quote that I was going to use, sort of mid to closing. But I feel this morning someone needs to hear this quote before I preach so they can take hold of it and know that the battle that they're in, who is by their side, and I feel if you can grasp hold of that, I think God will speak more and more into your life through the word I'm going to speak this morning so that we can impact not only our life, but we can impact our families, our community, and people outside of this building. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's not my quote. It's something I picked up in my readings this week. And it's about uh, the Duke of Wellington talking about Napoleon. And he says, when Napoleon was on the battlefield, it felt like that they were fighting 40,000 more men because of his presence, his stature, his leadership to his army. I want you to know that Napoleon might have been a great leader, but we've got the presence of the Lord Almighty on the battlefield for you and me this morning. How big a presence is that? And if they felt like there were 40,000 more men on the field, I tell you, I, don't, I just can't imagine the infinite amount of angels 
an army that's fighting on your behalf. And I feel God wanted me to start with that so you can take hold of that and know that you're not in this battle alone. You've got the leader of the army, the leader of the Almighty on the battlefield with you. And I want you to know and take hold of the fact that his presence is mighty. You know, we're all pushing back darkness. We're all pushing, pushing back on the attacks of the enemy. We're all pushing back on the things that are trying to encroach on our, uh, I want to call it an exclusion zone, but I don't really mean that. But, but because we're starting to push out and push back the darkness, we gain the land that we've taken. Pressure comes. But I want you to know, that Jesus Christ is on the battlefield with you this morning. Whatever you're facing, whatever you're facing in your family, whatever you're facing in your workplace, whatever you're facing in your health this morning, Jesus Christ, the Lord Almighty, is on the battlefield with you. And his presence to me is key. His presence is key. There are days that we don't feel like it, we don't feel that we deserve it, but that's what grace, mercy is all about. You do deserve it because God has freely given it to you through his son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross that we might know forgiveness of sins. What a fantastic gospel we have. What a fantastic Jesus we have. So I want you to take hold of that as we get into our concluding part this week about our living letters. I'm going to finish it off this week. And I thought having talked about our communities and who's reading, uh, you know, in our homes, who's reading our letter this morning, our families in the house, in our community, in our workplace, and we've got that core scripture that we'll use. But I want us to focus this morning, and I've highlighted this word because Mark's email hit the nail on the head, because he is worthy. He is worthy. And we've sung it this morning, he is worthy of our very best effort does that mean we get it right all the time all I used to tell people uh, in, in our workplace is all we can do is our very best I'm not looking for perfection Jesus isn't looking for perfection from you and me it's a good aim but all he's looking for is that we give our very best at any moment in time with whatever baggage we're carrying to keep on moving forward, keep that motion of moving forward. And as Daniel prayed this morning, moving forward in the overflow of our lives into the lives of this community. Because we've got something special. We've got something special. In the knowledge of Jesus Christ who died for us on the cross. That's worth celebrating. He's worthy Right, and you know, sometimes maybe it's just me, but I feel sometimes we don't celebrate that enough. I believe we do here, but we need to be celebrating His love in this community. So, Father, we thank you for what you want to do in our lives, Lord God. We open up in prayer, Lord God. We sit at your feet with open heart, open eyes to see you, open our ears, Lord, to hear your word and the Lord's passion to enact our lives as living letters, the walking, talking, living letter given to us through the passion of your love for each one of us this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. A living letter for Christ Jesus. I know it's the third week I've done this, but I promise you I think this is the end of a series, but I thought what we had to do is look at Jesus. Who are we reflecting? Because if we get that bit wrong, if we get that part wrong, you know, I, I mean, I love football, you know, and Quinn's goal on Friday night, we won it. Did you, how'd it go yesterday? Cut on, I oh, that means you didn't win. Sorry, apologies. <coughs> Sorry? Oh, okay, well, that's not too bad, is it? But Stags won their first game in 20 years in League One. I just thought I'd throw that, I just thought I'd throw that out. But, you know, Quinn's fantastic. He's, a, he's, a, he's an older player and he hit a volley and I just thought that was amazing. But, you know, I admire him for his skill. But I lift Jesus up as my saviour. It's Jesus that I follow. Because Jesus is the one who paid the price for you and me. Jesus was a living letter. No doubt in my mind he had spiritual passion for you for me, for this world. He came knowing what the Father had in store for him, but he still went to the cross 
and to the grave with that spiritual passion. We see it throughout the Gospels. He was a letter to be read and seen by everyone. And I want my life to be a letter seen and read by everyone with a positive outcome to who Jesus Christ is. I won't get it right all the time. I'm a human being. And Michael Chiat, you're a man also. So I've got a double whammy. She wouldn't really. I'm so sorry, darling. <laughs> well, she doesn't say it to my face anyway. Put it that way. But she doesn't say that. But what I mean is, you know, we're different, aren't we? Men react to things differently. Men process things differently. And uh, we're just not as good as women, I just have to say, in how we process <laughs> stuff. Did, that, did I recover then? Did I, did, I, did I recover all right there? Good. There is no lynch mob waiting for me outside the door then. But no, no, we're, we're equal but different, aren't we, in our temperaments, in the skill sets that we've got. And that's why it's important we come together and both come together to serve and worship God together. You know, this is what, not in the notes, but I went back to a board meeting uh, a couple of weeks ago. And the meetings room that I set up with a board table, sample cupboards in there, show off our wares, TV on the wall so we could do live stream into board members that couldn't make it. And I walked in, because Rachel is now a director there, and the whole room had changed. And I have to say, transformed in a fantastic way because of what she did. And she sees something different. And I'm just thinking, have you extended the room? It seems twice as big. No, just moved it around. And that's all she had to say. But anyway, I'll move on before I run out of time. But Jesus had a spiritual passion. And we need that passion because he had a passion for God a passion for the things of God and a passion for his plans and purposes. And that should be our desire to have a passion for the things of God, for the, uh, for the plans and purposes that God has for your life and for my life. We have a collective thing here as a church, don't we? We have a collective thing to walk forward, keep that motion forward and get into, into, into this community. Um, and, and not because we're trying to uh, win a medal, we just want people to know the truth and that the truth shall set them free. This is, no, this is no test where I'm, I'm saying they're bad. You know, I've come from a place where I didn't understand Jesus. We just want to help people to understand who Jesus really is. And that's why our living letters are important, because very often we don't get a chance to speak. They see how we react. But Jesus definitely had the passion for God, his Father in heaven. Passion for the things of God. Passion for his plans and his purposes. You know, Brenda mentioned last week when she walked in about a pilot light. I thought, that's good. I'll steal that. It's a great illustration for this week. Because I know some of us worry about the fire inside of us. We've been talking about roaring. Our songs are including the roar of the Holy Spirit. But, you know, I believe through Jesus Christ, every single one of us has a pilot light at least. And what we have to do is we've got to fan into flame that pilot light. You know, your boil our boiler's in our old airing cupboard, which is in our bedroom. Now, the, the central heating's not on at the moment, and I don't think it's going to go back on till around about November or December. Um, uh, but um, when, when it kicks in and, so, and the gas gets to it and the time says we want to come on, it bursts into flame. And I feel there's a time that some of us are operating in a pilot light and God says, together, let's fan the flame. That flame in 2 Timothy it talks about, fan into flame, the pilot light. Add fuel of the Holy Spirit to it. Add the power of the Holy Spirit to it. And lift and bring into flame. Bring that roaring fire. Pour the Holy Spirit on it. Receive the Holy Spirit to know that you can do mighty things for God. I want to encourage you, that pilot light is lit. We had a boiler when we lived in our first house it never worked but the pilot night never went out and I want to encourage you this morning if you think your pilot light's gone out I want to tell you your pilot light's not gone out there's a pilot light there ready to be flamed ready to be put into fan into flame and I want to encourage you this morning through that scripture to fan into flame the power of God in your life because he's not given us a, a spirit of timidity as he's given us a spirit of power to build up, to encourage, to strengthen, to
to play our part in our community, in our lives, in our families, in our workplace, and whatever space we find ourselves in, to be the love and the power through the flame that is roaring inside of us this morning through the power of his spirit. You know, Jesus, if I could pick loads of scriptures to start off with, but and this is not going to come up on screen, but if you, if you get back and read the summary in Acts 10, 38, that's recounted by Luke in that gospel, it's basically saying, it's a summary of his passion to obey God, his Father's will. Because it says, how God anointed Jesus with his Holy Spirit and with his power. Bear in mind, Jesus, Son of God, still needed to be anointed with the power of the Holy Spirit to do his will. So there's a perfect example for me and you that we need the Spirit. But he says that we can do this. We can have the Spirit. It came earlier in Acts. The power was poured out on us. So we don't keep going back to Acts. But I want to tell you today, day is a day in Acts. Today is the day the Holy Spirit can touch your life. Today is a day day that the Holy Spirit can heal you. A day that the Holy Spirit can fan into flame and cause you to roar like a fire and chuck on the logs onto the fire, burning with fire, because burning consumes in a positive way. Because what I'm saying is when that fire burns in me, it consumes all the dross in my life and pushes it down and discharges it and gets rid of it. And, you know... um, there's still things working through in my life, but I always feel when the pilot light's lit, the Holy Spirit comes and a passion and the burning and raging roar through me. I, I, it consumes. But I never go back to where I was. God's always lifting me, and that's part of our growth and what God wants us to do to grow. And every single one of us in this room, God loves you. Jesus loves you. He sent Jesus for every single one of us, and you've got the power and the pilot light to receive his Spirit and be all that God's created you to be. I know some of you are on a journey, and we're, we're depending where we are on that journey. But it's important for me to say this morning that, that, that as a living letter, Jesus encouraged all people to hear his word, to know him, to walk with him, to know his presence, and accept his call, and to know that he's forgiven our sin. As Adam and Eve took the apple, sorry, fruit, Sorry, sorry, pardon my, uh, (laughs) the the fruit from the tree. Jesus restored all that upon the cross. Jesus restored all that to the passion for you and me to go to the cross. A living letter, perfect example to do his father's will. And in that same scripture, it says, and God anointed Jesus, the Holy Spirit, with power, and he went around doing good. Who didn't want to do good? I want to do good. I don't know about you, but this bit. He went around doing good and healing people. Setting free all those that were oppressed. It just gets better, doesn't it? We see the the passion created something else in him, in his life, and that was compassion. The reason the Holy Spirit and the passion is important for us is we need to replicate that compassion. Because Jesus had passion and that passion turned into compassion but that compassion turned into action so he walked out of that place and he he not only had the passion to do see we've got to be hearers not just hearers and sitters on the word we've got to be doers of the word easy when i'm still up here to be tell you to do that but i'm encouraging you not just be hearers and sitters of the word but to be doers of the word to have passion ignite the pilot light Ignite the pilot light, get that moving, see compassion and moving compassion, and see the people in need, the blind, those that need healing, those that are oppressed, those that are depressed, to come alongside them, and then that compassion turns into action. And that's a forward motion we've been talking about. We've got to move forward. And as we're praying this morning, we're saying that there's going to be marathon runners, a couple of those in the room this morning, marathon runners, sprinters, Walkers, you know, doing the. I've not seen that at Olympics this time. I've just stopped doing it. But um, you know, people are walking. It's crawling people. But we're all moving together. We're all moving forward together. And that's the beauty of the kingdom of God. It doesn't matter where we're on the journey. We can all move together. And there are people who are out front. They were running point. 
to help us through the things that are coming our way and to just be a, a search party for us and sussing out the land like they sent the spies in. It's, it's just, you know, we've got to learn that we can heal the brokenhearted through the power of the fire within us, through the passion and compassion and the action, to bring freedom to the captives, recover sight for the blind, set the oppressed free. I know already some of you are thinking, how am I going to do that? It doesn't start with that. It starts with the pilot light and the fuel of the Holy Spirit igniting that fire and seeing where God takes you. I don't know how life would be without the Holy Spirit. I can't imagine how I survived for 29 years now knowing what I know. I worked hard. I was ambitious. I still am. I still work hard. I'm still ambitious. But I've got the presence of Jesus on the battlefield with me. I've got the presence of Jesus stoking me up, pouring fuel on the pilot light to cause it to burst into flame. What I don't want for us this morning is after three years, Philip asked Jesus in that scripture in John, when he's talking about, I've got many rooms, I'm preparing a room for you, don't worry about it, I'll come back for you. Philip says, well, how will we know the Father? How will we know the Father? And he says, Philip. I can imagine going, Philip, come on. Three years. Three years. I want to tell you, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And if I can take that one step further, when people see my life, I want them to see Jesus. I can't be God, but I've got, got Jesus within me through the power of the Holy Spirit. And when, Je- when they see me, I want them to see Jesus. And if I'm not on a good day, just lock myself in the bathroom and don't come out. No, never do that. What did we hear over breakfast the other day? A bad day doesn't mean it's a bad life. A bad day doesn't mean it's a bad life. Sometimes we write off our life because of a bad day. I want to tell you, a bad day does not mean a bad life. And we write ourselves off. We write other people off for a bad day. We write all the good things that they've done because of that one moment. But I want to tell you, one bad day doesn't make a bad life. And I know some of you right now are thinking, I've had a bad day, and that's wrote me off. I want to encourage you that God's not wrote you off. If you're feeling wrote off, it's because you've taken that decision for yourself. Because Jesus, God, the power of his Holy Spirit, wants to keep pouring fire on that pilot light, in that boiler, to keep you in flame, to keep you moving forward. Who has seen me has seen the Father, said Jesus. And I want to say who has seen me sees Jesus. I want that in my life more than ever. I want that in my life every single day. Because I saw people who reflected Jesus and that brought me into a place of getting to know him. You know, Jesus made that declaration, didn't he? Made a declaration at the age of 12, didn't he? he, he, he what does it say, if I can get the quote, quote quite right? Um, I've not put it on, on this reading. Sorry, I didn't read the core scripture, did I? Don't sack me just yet, will you? But we know the core scripture by now, don't we? I just get excited about what God wants to do in our lives. So I'm not making an apology for that. But this is a scripture that was written about him. And here we are, is in the temple, reading it out loud. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recover his sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free. Twelve years old. When he, I mean, you know the story. They were gone to the Passover festival, they were on the journey home, and uh, for three days they hadn't realised Jesus wasn't in the group with them. They went back to find him. They're looking everywhere for them. And when they find him, they said, we've been looking for you. You can imagine frantic parents going, we've been looking for you. He says, oh, you know where I'd be? I'd be in my father's house. 
And he was in that place with the religious leaders who were astounded at his understanding and his knowledge. So why am I saying this? Because age of your journey doesn't, present, doesn't prevent you from being a voice and a letter, a living letter for Christ Jesus in his life. He was 12 years old. He grew in stature. I'm getting ahead of myself. But Luke 2.52 is something we had to write on at MIT. We had to read a book and do something. But can I summarize it into one phrase? Luke 52 says he grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. Generic term. Right? I want to grow in wisdom and stature in favor with God. I want to grow more and more into the favor of God with his wisdom and his strength in that. And then, secondly, before men, because that's where my living letter comes in, because I want people to know the love of Christ. I want them to know they've got a pilot light that they can ignite in the things of the kingdom of God. And another reason for mentioning that, that Jesus grew up in an environment where the Spirit of God dwelt. So I want to encourage you in your homes, in your workplace, people encouraged, as I was all those years ago, by the Spirit of God that dwelt in the company that I worked for at that time. His presence was undeniable. took me a while to get to the point where I want to go, is this for me? But I grew up in that workplace in the presence of God. He dwelt in that place. And I want to encourage you that if God can do that through me, for me, through others. It doesn't matter where you work, where you are, I believe that if you bring the presence of God and it dwells in that place, people will see Jesus Christ through your life. I want to encourage you. It doesn't matter where we are. We're good at doing it when we're in church, aren't we? If we're honest. And maybe many of you are good at doing it when you're outside church as well. Maybe it's just me that you've got to pray for and look for that passion. But, you know, it is difficult, isn't it? I mean, we talk about football like it's second nature, don't we? No problem. And I didn't know they'd lost, so apologies. I wasn't trying to stir up the pot. I know Chesterfield drew 1-1. I watched that game as well, the highlights and everything else. So I thought Keith's going to come today, and if I don't know the score of that one, maybe I should have looked. But Charity Shield anything is it it's not nothing is it it's only a Wembley trip and a season opener sets the scene for the rest of the season but don't worry about it it's only a game <laughs> you've got about another 30 odd to go haven't you Stags I think we did play well but I'm not taking anything for granted that we just suddenly turn the season around and we're going to win it but I hope so so what am I trying to say? That is passion, Jesus Christ, on display all through the, all through the Gospels. You know, after Cana and the wedding and the miracle of the wine, he went to the temple, and then we have this situation where he's pushing over the temple, he's pushing over tables, the money changers, and I haven't got much time. But you know, the story there is they'd just forgotten what they were supposed to be doing. They'd lost the heart of what they were supposed to be doing. Because they were starting to... Sk- you couldn't buy an animal if you didn't have a shekel. So they were converting Roman coins for shekels. They were skimming off money. They were laundering money. They were, they were just making a mockery of what they were supposed to be doing in the temple in that place of devotion and prayer. So he got a little bit reactive. And he kicked them out. And as I got to this scripture, I just wanted to say something I can, as gentle as I can, but as encouraging as I can. It made me think again how I had to kick things out of my life that I'd allowed to permeate into me, thinking that they were right. And they may have been at the time. But I just feel God, at moments in time, takes me back to this story. And Jesus was saying, get out of here. And God, Jesus wants us to say to ourselves, this needs to go. This is just affecting your life, Glenn. This needs to go. And I just want to encourage you to think about those things in your life. You know, defrauding the tax office. I can't think of any examples. I've not had a word of God to try and point a finger at anybody. But you know what I mean? All those things, just for the avoidance of doubt, I've never defrauded the tax office of 
a penny, but it's just an example that I seem to feel that when I'm talking to men particularly, that's the one thing that they feel comfortable with. You know, and I'm just thinking, I just don't think you realise the danger you're in, not just from Jesus, but the tax office is actually quite powerful. Anyway, no names. Um, but, you know, I think that's where I know that God's always been in my life because that's never been an issue for me. You pay what's due. You just deliver what's due. And it's never been an issue for me. It's other things that have snagged me a little bit where he's saying you've got to get that out of your life. You've got to do that. And I don't want to give you an example, really, but you all know what's interfering in your life that God says, now is the time. Now is the time to say, get out of my life. And it's just like an old shirt. That it's just time that's worn. Margaret shunk it in the wash so it doesn't fit me anymore. All that sort of, all that sort of stuff. <laughs> I shunk it in the washer, sorry. Just, can you just delete that bit, Danny, when you put it up? But, um, but you know, so we took it out because I bought another shirt. A different one that fits me better, that looks better, is more modern. You know, it's a shame the guys didn't get the memo this morning about stripes. There's only one person in the room with stripes on, so they got the memo. But do you know what I mean? There's things that we don't need anymore. It's not always bad things. We need to get rid of stuff. We need to get rid of stuff. I know somebody in the room that really needs to come back to amber and blue from blue and white to return back to that house and uh, start to watch a good team. But, um, you know, it's important that we, we listen to God so that we can be a living letter, so that we can have a passion, to have compassion to act. There are times when we just need to say, God, I don't want this anymore. I don't want this anymore. And that's for you to decide what that is. That's for you to turn to God and say, what is it that you want me to jettison? What is it that's affecting my devotion and my prayer time? It doesn't mean you're not praying or you're, you're not devoting your time, but there are things at times when we've just got to say, God, what is it next? What do I need to just jettison now? Because I want to keep on growing. I want to keep getting taller. I want to keep leaning back in the presence of God and getting taller and growing. But God, what is it that's weighing me down? What is it that's weighing me down? Because I want to know the fullness of God in my life. I don't know about you guys. Maybe it's just me, but I want to know the fullness of God in my life. I want to fulfill the purpose he's got for my life. I want to see the kingdom of God come. I want to see the kingdom of God come in this place. Why? Just so people who have been oppressed can be set free. So the captives, Paul and Silas, I think you mentioned earlier on, Paul, that they can be set free through a passion of believers who can bring the presence of Jesus into their life. You know, the, and the disciples remember this scripture, if I've got it right. Then the disciples remember this prophecy from the scriptures. Passion for God's house will consume me. I want a passion for God's house. I don't want a passion for my house. Because I know if I have a passion for God's house, then my house will receive the passion. It will be a natural consequence. But to be a living letter, we've got to follow Jesus' example to have a passion for people and rise up with that passion, to have a devotional life, to have a prayer life and get rid of the stuff that now is no longer any use to us, to have a clear out of stuff. And I wouldn't be bold enough to, you know, I've got no words from God on what that may or may not be. That's for you guys to decide to get before God. And don't look for something that's always bad. It's just no longer of any use to you. And this is the time God wants to say, jettison this. You know, the, the temple was a house of prayer and devotion. That's why he got angry about the temples, what they turned it into. And, you know, when you prepare this word, preachers live and challenge themselves before they can deliver it. You know, we're never pointing the finger outwards. It's always lived through us first. This living letter series has been a challenge to me before I could bring the three sessions, because I want to be a living letter. I want you to be a living letter. I want you to embrace it. But first I had to know that my life matched up to what I was preaching. Not because I feel oppressed or you know, compelled. I just want to live what it is that I'm preaching. Just to show his compassion, how it led to action, the man with leprosy, I haven't got time to go through the scriptures, the man with leprosy came to him. Jesus, this was the untouchable group in that time. 
untouchable. You couldn't get near them. You crossed the road. How many people in our society do we feel about like that today? But when it came to Jesus, Jesus did the unthinkable. Now, I'm not telling you to reach out to a leper. I'm talking to the spiritually, right? Just for the avoidance of doubt so I don't get into trouble, right? But Jesus reached out, touched the man and he was healed. Unthinkable for a religious leader, a rabbi, a pastor. Unthinkable. But Jesus' passion saw compassion and he acted by laying hands on this man. We need to learn to act out our compassion that's been given to us by our passion to serve the things of the kingdom of God. I'm going to finish on this, Danny, if you want to start to make your way up on the team. I've had my time. I want to encourage the church to light up together. You know, I don't know who's been a boy scout in the room. I never was a boy scout. I was going to say I didn't like uniforms. I joined the air training corps. Well, that has got a more disciplined um, uniform protocol than the, the boy scouts. But those that know Brecon Beacons, we were on camp at RAF St. Athens and we were part of a survival, two, two nights on a survival course on Brecon Beacons. We weren't given anything. So if I could have videoed it in those days, but I don't think I had a phone then. If you could have videoed us watching us make, trying to make a fire, two sticks, some were doing this method. Some were doing this method, two pieces of wood together. But what struck me about what we did do and what the instructor told us to do was as we're rubbing the stick together to keep on blowing. And it just talked to me about when we're doing this and trying to light the fire in our lives, the breath of God through prayer, our devotional life is the breath of God. And you breathe onto it and suddenly you get that spark. And that's God going, there's a spark. Come on, Glenn. And it bursts into flames. It roars into fire. Roars into fire. I want to encourage you this morning to get moving. Let go. Come on, Glenn. Burst into flame. I want to be around people of passion. Because I know that if you're around people of passion, then it's a soon catch fire. Our prayer meetings which for the avoidance of doubt, I hadn't learnt till the other day that um, having got the debrief on Wednesday's Alpha, but people don't realise that our prayer meetings on the first Monday in the month is open to anybody. It's not a leadership group. It's open to everybody. And, you know, this is where you've got to learn the art of communication. I thought that was... I never thought it was leaders, but it just shows you that people didn't think they were welcome or they couldn't come. I want to tell you, it's open house. Come and catch fire with us. Come and get the passion of Christ in your life. Because it's amazing. It's amazing what God is doing around us. And if you don't feel the passion, if you feel you want to get the pilot light moving, be around people who've got the fire because it's, it consumes, it spreads. If you've ever seen a forest fire, thankfully I've not been over close. I've been close to one in America, but far enough away just to not to really be evacuated or anything like that, but the way it catches over the top of the trees. Well, you were involved in one a couple of years ago, weren't you, just over the back here. But the wind comes and it goes, and the wind of the Spirit, the fire that we've got, just moves on to other people and they can catch the fire. I want people to catch the fire, the passion of God, to be moved into compassion, and in that compassion to act and to move and to see people set free. Lord, guide us through every season. Light the fire. Oh, I think that's a song, isn't it? I've got to be careful if I start singing again. Light my fire, Lord. Fan it into flame. I believe you sent Jesus into this world on the cross for me, for the forgiveness of my sin, and for everyone else. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for giving me a new start in life. And I thank you, Lord, that you've chosen, I've chosen to follow you all those years ago and if you don't know that prayer if you've not had that experience I want to encourage you to know Jesus to know he's set you free to know he's paid the price upon the cross and he did it not just for me but he did it for you 
something for everybody. All we need to do is accept the invitation. We don't have to know everything. We don't have to explain every mystery. We just need to come into his presence and know his love for you and me that sent him to the cross. Guide us, Lord, in every season. Amen. Jesus, Jesus. 
every chain set the captives free amen Amen. we've just sung what we've heard amazing song to finish with Daniel thank you very much for your dedication and your ear to what the Lord's saying we really appreciate you and the team and we appreciate everybody in this church in this fellowship we appreciate everybody just a couple of announcements. I'm, well, I'll be looking around at people just to make sure I don't forget anything. Elf is on this week, 7 o'clock start. So that uh, should be good. I've heard good reports. I'll catch it with Rob and Jackie later. Um, but um, things are going well there. You're still free to join. Still free to join. Wherever we're at, week 6 I think it'll be this week if memory serves me right. So please come along. Join the group. It's, uh, it's an amazing amazing time. I missed it this week because I was at the Trent Rockets, but God's forgiven me and we won. Um, so uh, had a great night and uh, Ralph was getting all the autographs of the star players on his cricket bat, so he loved it. We spent time there, but I knew he had a good, a good night. Um, John's funeral has now been confirmed for the 27th. Um, 10.30 start here. And then we'll uh, be a private ceremony for the uh, closer family over at Woodhouse Cemetery. So if you can make it, we'll be here at 10.30 if you can offer to help with anything. The um, food and the wake is not here, so there's not quite so much for us to do after the, the service. Um, but I know that the family would welcome you if you can make it to the John Fretwell Centre, if you know where that is. Uh, to join them, to share, celebrate, and remember John's life here on earth and the mark he's left upon our life. Amen. Amen. And just thinking about prayer, that could be the 2nd of September, if I've got my dates right for the next one. So I think all I've ever said is, I don't want anybody to feel they're coming out of duty, but everybody's welcome. If you want to be here, you're welcome to be here. But I just try to relieve people of the pressure of thinking that they ought to be here or they'll be judged or they'll be thought of. Couldn't be further from the truth. I just want people who want to pray to be in the room. So if you want to pray, if you've never prayed out loud before but you want to pray, then you need to be here on the 2nd of September and hear what God's saying. See the presence of God moving in people's lives and to see what God's saying to us. Right, so everybody's welcome, but I just never want you to feel under any duty to be here. I don't take a list of names, and to be honest, we get so deep into prayer, sometimes I don't think I'd remember everybody that was here. So it's not about that. It's about wanting to be here and pray, but everybody is welcome, just for the clarity of doubt in people's minds. Amen. I think that's all I notice us. I think we're done on, on that. I think that's everything I needed to remember. Come on, I must be a first. Somebody will tell me afterwards. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you today, tomorrow, next week, next month, past, present and future.
that God's grace and his face will shine upon you, that you turn towards him, the Lord turn his face towards you, but they also pray that I can continue to turn my face towards him. But the Lord give you peace. The Lord give you strength. As we ruminate on his word, as we've become living letters, may you know that grace and that peace to stretch out and be who God's called you to be. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Tea and coffee.